Kia ora. welcome to Bus Days. Today I want to talk about charging lithium ion batteries. Um, the logic's really simple. Uh, you bulk charge them with constant current until they're charged. Then you turn it off. You disconnect the charger. You do not keep charging them. So unlike a lead acid battery that likes to have a float charge, uh, these don't. So you can't float charge or you can't trickle charge lithium ion batteries. Can you? Now let's take a step back and look at what charging is. You've got you got a battery. Now, if I apply a power supply to this battery that is at a voltage higher than this battery, power will flow into the battery. That's charging. So when you hook up a charger to your car battery it has got say for argument's sake just over 14 volts available car battery if it's flat has got 12 maybe less and so there'll be current flow into the battery and that's kind of charging in a nutshell right now there's there's smart chargers that do all sorts of fancy things while they do that but the fact is you've got current going into the battery because you've got a volt difference so how's this relevant when charging lithium ion batteries? Well, lithium ion batteries don't want to be at 100% for any longer than necessary and they certainly don't want to be more than 100% and they do not want to be topped up once they are at 100% charged. So the logic um, that most chargers have of having a float charge voltage just doesn't suit them. But what if that float charge voltage was well below 100%. Um, in fact, if you were programming a programmable lead acid charger to suit lithium ion, like something like this solar charge controller, sure it's got programs built into it to suit AGM and uh, a couple of other lead acid types, but um, it doesn't have a lithium profile. Now, a, a lithium profile is pretty easy to set up though. You just define the maximum voltage for bulk charging and then you would set the, um, the float voltage well below that. So I wanted to test my logic. So what if I trickle charge the lithium battery permanently? crazy I suppose, but I did. So how did I get away with having this hooked up to a power supply constantly for the last three months? Well the answer is quite simple really, it wasn't charging. They were connected to the power but they weren't charging. See these, you have to be a little bit careful with 18650 batteries in that there are actually a few different chemistries. Um, the 18650 defines the form factor, the, the shape and size, not, um, not actually how the battery is made up. These particular ones are 3.7 volt nominal, basically standard laptop batteries, which are the most common. Now, they're fully charged at 4.2 volt. So in a 4S configuration, which these are, that would be, what, 16.8 volts. Now, um, they're flat at, I don't know, maybe 3.2. They probably become useless before that. Uh, so back in the vaping days, I would run them flat constantly, every day, and put them back in the charger, and it would charge them to 4.2. But what if I only half charge them to say 3.75, which would make 15 volts. Now there's a reason for that. 15 volts is quite high for running 12 volt appliances, but most 12 volt things will handle 15 volts. But it's quite low for a 4S pack of these. So what I did was I hooked these up to a 15 volt power supply, set it at about 5 amps, and left it there. 
Now I actually did a number of tests um, loading them up uh, and, and found a course that, that provided I stayed under my 5 amps that I'd set. Um, any load I applied to these batter, to this battery pack didn't need to use any power from the battery pack, it was using it direct from the power supply. Now I have a specific use in mind and that is running a Chinese diesel heater. Now Chinese diesel heater wants 12 volts, happy with 15. Um, it does not want it to be much less than 12 volts. It won't be happy with that. Uh, it has you know, reasonable starting currents but they drop away quite quickly uh, once the glow plug goes out. So, so a power supply will work for that and probably quite well but it means that I have to have a power supply that's capable of handling that, that initial startup current. Um, and should there is there are some risks around um, a heater suddenly losing power and uh, not being able to go through its cooldown cycle and therefore becoming damaged from overheating. On the other hand, this battery will start and run the heater fine, but it won't run it for very long. It's only 12 amp hours, um, so I have run it for a, a, a several hours, but you know it, it probably won't run overnight. Now, what if? Oh, additionally, um, this is flat when, when its lowest cell reaches 3.2 volts, which, you know, assuming that they're perfectly in balance at that time, is still over 12 volts. Uh, so the heater won't know that this is flat, this will just disconnect. So on its own, this is no good. But with a little buck converter running off my 24 volt bus system, Powering this at 15 volts, which is like maybe holding it at 50% charge, which is kind of perfect for lithium ion batteries, right? Then that, that should work great. So while I've tried this on the diesel heater, I have tried a number of different loads of varying levels on this, um, some quite high loads. Uh, I was up over 20 amps trying to make sure that I was using energy out of the battery as well as energy coming direct from the power supply and um, it all works great. Then of course if you have depleted this at all, uh, as soon as the load drops the power supply continues putting energy back into the battery until it reaches its 15 volts or 3.75 volts per cell. Um, and it's good again and after three months of mucking around with that and then generally just leaving it connected and theoretically trickle charging uh, my cell voltages are within 10 millivolts um, so I think that's pretty cool so no in theory um, you don't float charge lithium ion batteries but you can And I have, and I will. So what do you think? In the early days I was checking temperatures and cell voltages a couple of times a day. I had it set in a concrete floor where it, it wasn't in contact with anything else just in case it caught fire. Of course it never even got warm. It never, at the end of the day when you look at the logic behind it, if I've got a 15 volt battery pack and 15 volts hooked to it, it's going nowhere. It's not charging, it's not discharging. In fact, all the power supply was doing was providing power to the battery monitor because this wasn't using any. Anyway, just wanted to show you a crazy idea. Wondering what you think about that. Um, I will be doing some more tests with this pack over hopefully over the next few weeks and um, and if you're interested you'll get to see them uh, it's easy to be sure hit the subscribe button um, if you like this video hit the like button for us it's always good to know and um, hopefully that means we'll see you again soon take care Matewa.